So, you want to build a portable gaming desktop, but you have no idea where to start. Well, that's where the SSUPD Meshalicious Portable Mini ITX case comes from. You know, that sounds like something from like Star Trek, the SSUPD Enterprise. But is putting your tiny PC inside this little enclosure worth it? Well, we will investigate that question. Let's go! Lee & Lee has always been a company that has produced state-of-the-art PC cases with innovative designs. Great airflow cases such as the Landcool 2 Mesh and the new 011 Air Mini. Don't worry, we will be reviewing that one. And showcase cases like the 011 Dynamic XL, as well as standard looking cases such as the Landcool 205. They have now taken that a step further with their spin-off brand, the SSUPD and the Mini ITX Meshalicious case. Oh, and apparently innovative names like SSUPD, which stands for Sunny Side Up. Speaking of innovative, have you seen the innovative use of our new era baseball jackets? You can get these bad boys now with free shipping just in time for winter over at robitechstore.com. With other mini ITX cases out there, such as the Cooler Master NR200 and NR200P, the NZXT H1, and the Fantex Evolve Shift 2 Air Mini, what makes the SSUPD Meshalicious better than the rest? First, let's do an overview of the Meshalicious. Man, I love saying that every time. And let's see what we can actually put inside. Now the case comes in a few different variations, so let's break them down. You can choose black or white for your color choice, along with full mesh or a tempered glass sign panel, and PCI Gen 3 or PCI Gen 4 for the riser cable, made by LinkUp. You might be saying, what's the different, Roby? Well, one's black and one's white. Duh. Oh, yeah. And the PCIe Gen 3 or Gen 4, that's your question. Well, without going too far off topic, some motherboards, you may have to adjust BIOS settings to make the Gen 3 riser capable compatible depending on your system. As of right now, there isn't a lot of data out there that warrants a Gen 4 riser cable over a Gen 3. From what we've seen for performance differences, it's about two or 3% on very specific GPUs. So really the only card that may suffer is the RTX 3090. Now the prices vary for the Meshalicious depending on the configuration you choose. Here's a quick breakdown. Prices are from SSUPD's website and may be cheaper from third party sellers such as Newegg. Don't worry, Tom the Bot will have links below for the least expensive place to buy them. So make sure to follow along at robytechdeals.com or at robytechdeals on Twitter. Now for the black and white tempered glass PCIe Gen 3, you're spending 119 bucks. If you're gonna do the Gen 4 with tempered glass, you're talking about $179, but there is no white version available in this configuration. For black and white mesh with PCIe Gen 3, it's $129, and for black and white full mesh with PCIe Gen 4, it's $189. Now the exterior of the mesh list is, is just that, it's mesh. Unless you opt for the tempered glass, then it's mesh and glass. It's mesh -a glass Glashalicious. Meshalicious is more fun to say, though Glashalicious could be my pet name. Shh. Never mind. It doesn't take up any room on your desk with a total of 14.67 liters in volume or 0.5 cubic feet with a dimension of 245 millimeters length, 164.4 millimeters width, and 360 millimeters height, or nine inches by six and a half inches by 14 inches. I think you can figure out the order there. That's about the size of a shoebox and a half. So not very big, and that is awesome, especially if your desk real estate is limited or you wanna make one of these amazing travel PCs. Now the front panel has minimal ports on it as it should. It comes with one USB 3 type A, a power button and one type C 3.1 gen two USB port. It's a small form factor case. So this isn't too surprising. The toolless design of the Meshalicious is great, specifically the push pins or even just the removable top frame, which makes it super easy to get to the various angles you're gonna need if you're gonna build inside of this case. Now what's even better is that you can mix and match side panels and those are available from Newegg and you can check out the links in the description below. Okay, that's enough about the exterior, but let's talk about the interior and what you can actually put inside. PC parts. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be here all week. This is a great case to put in an AIO, as it has support for either two 120 millimeter AIOs, which you could then do a CPU and a GPU, which is awesome. You can do 140 millimeter, 240 millimeter, or 280 millimeter AIOs, 
with a max radiator length of 320 millimeters. So like an AIO, like the 240 millimeter Liam Lee Galahad or the 280 millimeter Corsair H115i Elite Capellix will all fit. So just be mindful though of your tube and fan cable management. If you're looking for only fans in the Meshalicious build, you'll be able to fit two 120 millimeter or two 140 millimeter fans in the front, which if you wanna check out our AMD build where we did 140 millimeter Noctua fans, you can check that out right here. Now for your motherboard, you have two options. You can fit mini ITX motherboard along with a mini DTX, that Asus mini DTX ROG Crosshair motherboard, for instance. The tray the motherboard sits in functions as a divider as it splits the space between your motherboard and CPU side on the back is where your GPU fits. The Meshalicious supports three slot, up to 332 millimeter in length and 155 millimeter in width, and four slot 336 millimeter in length and 155 millimeter in width GPUs. So even an NVIDIA RTX 3090 FE or some 6900 XTs from AMD will actually fit in there. There's a GPU mounting strut that's also adjustable vertically and allows space for the PCIe cables connecting the GPUs. Onto power supplies. Meshlicious can support full ATX, SFX, and SFXL PSUs. But Roby, if I don't have an AIO and I want to use an air cooler, can I fit anything? Well, not exactly. There are some limitations to that too. Meshlicious it's still fun to say, supports up to 73 millimeter air coolers with a three slot GPU and 53 millimeters with a four slot GPU. Your best bet is to go with that Noctua NH L9A Chromax Black Low Profile or something along those lines. To be honest, that cooler is a beast and you'll be super surprised at what that is able to cool. In fact, you can check out more about that right here. Now, what about the storage, Roby? I have tons of storage I need. Well, the Meshalicious has you covered as it can support two three and a half inch HDDs or four two and a half inch SSDs with an add-on tray. There is also three more two and a half inch SSD locations you can fit at the bottom of the case. Just remember, this all depends on the PSU and other components you choose. And there you guys have it. All you need to know on what the Meshalicious can do and support. But enough about what it can do, let's actually do do. <laughs> I said, I said doo-doo. For our CPU, we are gonna continue to stick with our Ryzen 9 5900X. For our motherboard, we're gonna be using the ISUS ROG Strix B550i for our storage and for our RAM. We're gonna use G-Skill. So this is Trident Z Neo. And then for our storage, we're using a one terabyte Samsung 980 uh, NVMe SSD. This is the Fantex Glacier One 240T30. Using their new T30 fans, these are brand new, just ridiculous, Quiet, we're gonna use our Founders Edition 3080. We're gonna be using the EVGA Supernova 850 GM. Ah, oh, yes. So here's our CPU right here, our 5950X. Okay, here we go, click time. Oh, 97.2. Okay, so let's do this last part, which is installing our M.2. Thank you for using Fantex. So we're gonna take this out. I'm Bob Rossin right now though. I'm painting some happy little trees into the thermal paste. Strip in the Meshalicious case, which is nice and simple. Very well built case to put in our IO shield. There we go. So we've hooked in our, our riser cable for our GPU and hook these up. Okay, so everything is kind of hooked up and ready. Um, let's go ahead and start putting our AIO together. This might be too thick for our AIO. We might have to use something a little bit more low profile. I think we're pushing the limits here of the thickness here. So we're gonna do a quick changeover and go to the other glacier. But I think we're gonna have to do a pull config for our air because the, the, the tubes are not gonna fit any other way. Okay, so let's get this built then. Okay, and now we are good to go. Let's hook up all of our, our cabling here. There's the build thus far, we're super close. I love this little PSU. And there it is. Okay, cool, so there's our PSU ready to go. There we go, okay, that is in. All the stuff goes on easily because it's all cable managed to heck here we go going to mood mode see how this looks 
There it is. Well, I got a lot of build experience in this case, and I built it in a whopping three times in two weeks. Really wanting to make sure that I could build what I would consider an ultimate portable build, and we started with a system using nothing but an APU up to what I would consider a portable powerhouse with a 5900X and an RTX 3080. So breaking it down, this case is very easy to build in for an SFF or small form factor build, specifically given the layout if you stay within what's optimal for this case. SFF PSU, standard AIO, mini ITX, and no weird like three and a half inch HDDs or SSD trays. You're gonna find this is a very pleasant experience to build in if you stay away from the anomalies. Even making the build look good from a cable management standpoint is pretty straightforward. So should you decide to display your build with either tempered glass or removing the mesh side panel, you can make it look awesome. Honestly, I have very little to complain about when it comes to this case. Only one potential issue, and I can't really see a way to fix it. And that's in, depending on how you do the installations, some of the cables are gonna block airflow to the fans, especially if you have a pull configuration like we did. Did it impact thermals? Well, let's just find out, shall we? So for thermals in our little portable beast of a machine, inside of the SSUPD Meshalicious, we use the following hardware in our negative pressure configuration using Fantex 120 MP PWM fans. For CPU, we were cooling the Ryzen 9 5900X, and for our GPU, we were using the Founders Edition RTX 3080. So kicking it off with CPU at idle, things look great with our CPU sitting at 39 degrees with all the side panels off and only a four degree jump to 43 with all the side panels on. When we turn it up and run our ADA64 stress tests, we see things jump up to a still very nice 79 degrees in our open case scenario and only a two degree jump to 81 in the closed case scenario. Now for the GPU, it's a very similar story. At idle, we saw identical temps, either sides on or off with things chilling. See what I did there at 43 degrees, chilling? Well, when we stress test our GPU though, using heaven and a myriad of other benchmarks to get it to soak temp, we saw it peak at 77. Again, identical to either open or closed case. So again, we have room to play with our GPU if we wanted to and really push this build to maximum power. You can see that airflow is doing really well and even gives us a little headroom to make things better. I still have room in the build should I want to jump up to a 280 millimeter AIO if I really wanted to get crazy. One thing worth noting though is that you will more than likely see some jumps in temps if you decide to go with tempered glass. Recommendation, if you're gonna use the tempered glass side panel, is to do it on the motherboard side versus the GPU, especially if you're using an AIO. If you're going to do an airflow only build, I would not recommend the tempered glass side panel at all, and only go all mesh. All mesh, all the time, that's the vote. And if you wanna see what those temps look like, you can check out the 5700G build that we linked down in the description below. So enough about thermals, let's see how my little monster did in the benchmarks department, shall we? First up, it's single player RTX experience, given this is an NVIDIA GPU paired with a Ryzen 9 5900X and a Founders Edition RTX 3080. For Tomb Raider running at 1440p with DLSS on, at the highest preset, we saw an average frame rate of 171 frames per second across all the runs we did on the game, which is beautiful. For Metro Exodus, also running at 1440p, ray tracing on high and DLSS set to balance, we saw an average FPS of 77. Again, awesome for some nice cinematic single player FPS gaming. But what about a few tuned AMD experiences? Well, first let's check out Dirt 5. At 1440p with ultra high graphics, we saw an average frame rate of 132.7. That seems good enough for some dirty little racing. And lastly, rounding out the single player experiences with Borderlands 3 running the highest graphical preset, we saw an average of 132.7. Eat that claptrap. But what about MP games, Roby? I wanna play MP games. Well, guess what? 
No problem. Let's talk about Apex Legends, running at low visual settings at 1440p, optimized for competitive gameplay, which means we are trying to get the most frames we possibly can, and we inked out 280 FPS across our multiple game sessions. So this is great for like a potential land travel build in the future, should I just need a rig to bring with me? And it's so small. Now finally for Fortnite, again at 1440p, visual settings set for competitive, crushing 360 FPS with, wait, what's that? 548. Yep, that'll do Meshalicious. That'll do. So wrapping it all up, the Meshalicious is really Meshalicious in all the ways that a case could be Meshalicious. In all of the ways we push this build, either Airflow or AIO, it never let the hardware down and gave it the best possible scenario for success. This case is really easy to build in and also makes it look great. And even if you are a new builder, this is not gonna be that big of a struggle. With the options of PCI Gen 4, Gen 3, and even tempered glass in both white and black, it gives you plenty of options that you need to build something that is small, powerful, and stays cool if you provide the right hardware to do so. And all of that is at a price that doesn't really break the bank either. If you're looking for a great SFF case that won't let you down, then look no further than the SS UPD Meshalicious. And we are proud to give it the Robitech seal of approval here on the show. But what did you think? Was this what you expected out of this case? Did you see a prior review and ours aligns with it or not? If you were gonna build in one, what would you actually put in it? And do you think there's something that we missed in our review? We'd love to know all of that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we either post a new video or go live with one of our awesome live stream shows. We hope you enjoyed this video. This is Glashalicious, signing off for the next one.